Well, if you can't read the symbol, you can hang up reading the schematic. Simple as that. Why is it so important to read the print? Guys, the number one troubleshooting tool that you have at your disposal is the schematic. Whenever there's a hydraulic problem, I don't care how big or small, you should always have a print in your hand when you're troubleshooting. How many people do you see have a hydraulic schematic in their hand when there's a hydraulic problem? We got one. Nobody else. Guys, if you're not using a print, you're troubleshooting blind. That's all it is to it. The print shows you how every component's hooked up in the system. See, do we have any electricians in here? I think we do, don't we? When you guys have an electrical problem, and I'm not talking about you know something simple, but you got a significant electrical problem, do you use a print to troubleshoot from? Yeah. Why? Okay, if you didn't do that, how would that uh, affect your job? It would take a long time to figure out what was wrong. Well, see, over the years, hydraulics, uh, we've been kind of, I guess some of these guys have fallen short because as far as training our people, because when it comes to electrical circuits, an electrical circuit, you have a print. A hydraulic circuit is a hydraulic circuit. They're so much alike, they're very similar. If you, if you troubleshoot electricity with a print, you should do the same thing with hydraulics. Okay? So why would somebody not use a schematic? Well, somebody said it a while ago. If we got any, you know, I've had people say that. Don't have it. <coughs> well, you do have some here, guys, I've seen. It's just that maybe they're put up somewhere. You guys haven't uh, been given access to them, but you got them on all your equipment. Okay? Um, after the advanced training, when I come back, you guys will have your own set of prints in your manual, that press. So you'll have them on that press, okay? Um, another reason somebody may not use a print, I can't read the symbols. We are going to learn how to read them in here because when I come back and do the next course, we're going to have look at a bunch of schematics up here. So it's going to help us understand and read those symbols so we can understand the schematic, okay? So one thing, see, you should always have a print. And, you know, one thing, me being a consultant, I do a lot of troubleshooting. I get called into mills that are down. They say, hey, look, we need help. I walked into some plants and never have set eyes on that system. What do you think I'm going to do? Do you have a print? I hope you do. Because if you don't, <laughs> you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to be a parts changer. <laughs> And, and that's one thing, changing parts is not troubleshooting. We gotta get out of that. If that's what we're doing, you gotta get out of that. Because this is what happens when parts are changed. Now, when there's a hydraulic problem, what's the first thing somebody hollers to change? Pump, usually, right? Change the pump. Have you ever seen somebody change a pump, put a new one on, the problem's still there? These are all still there. But I've seen it done. And I'll tell you what, I, at one mill, these guys changed the pump three times before they said, well, maybe it's not the pump. They thought, oh, well, maybe the one off the shelf was bad. Let's, let's make sure. Guys, look, the pump is one of the most expensive components you got and takes longer to change than anything else. So why start there? That's backwards troubleshooting, if you ask me. See, when you troubleshoot, too, you start with the easiest, work your way to the hardest. Now, I'm not saying it can't be the pump, but there's some things on the pump that we can troubleshoot to check it. That's what you want to do, not just change it to see if that'll fix it. And that's where we go wrong. Um, so what happens is the pump gets changed three times, the problem's still there. Then what we do? Then we change this valve, 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 then we change this valve. Finally, it's working. You know, nobody cares now. Because, man, we've been estimated up in the morning now. We've been here all night. It's running. That's the main thing. But we didn't learn anything, see? When you troubleshoot, you learn why it failed and why it caused it. those symptoms to occur, okay? Um, so definitely, we want to change that. We don't want to be parts changers. We want to be troubleshooters from now on, okay? 
Now, in this class, this is not just the basics. Don't let that word fool you. <clears throat> See that word troubleshooting? <clears throat> this is a basic class, and we teach it from a troubleshooting point of view. So we're going to, when we talk about a pump, not, not only we're going to learn how it works, we're going to learn how to troubleshoot it and how you set the pressures. We're going to cover every component this way, okay? So we're going to get a lot of troubleshooting here. This is not just the basics. <clears throat> now, uh, if you guys would, look, look at the, the manual in front of you on the cover. Uh, you see that on the bottom, of course, it has our, our logo there and our website. Um, you'll notice it says uh, we're on, we've got LinkedIn and, uh, was it, Facebook and YouTube. And there's a uh, QR code at the top of the manual. See the little QR code there? Most, most of us are familiar with those nowadays. A lot of restaurants use them. They put them <coughs> excuse me, on their menus and things. Now, we have a YouTube account, which means if you go on our YouTube channel, GPM Hydraulics, We've got a lot of videos on there. We've got a video, I know one of them myself, I'm actually setting a pump compensator and relief valve together on a live system, explaining it, walking you through it. Uh, we've got re, uh, repairing an, a bladder accumulator on there, much more, okay? So uh, there's a lot of good informational videos on our YouTube channel and on our website, okay? We have them there as well if you want to go uh, uh, look at them. Now, the QR codes, as you're going, we're going through the course, follow along with the book because you will see a QR code pop up in your manual every, every so often. Okay? So where, where we talk about setting the pump and relief valve, and it's got it step by step in the book, but there's also a QR code there. Well, that means there's a video on how to do that. Now, if you don't have one, you can install a free app on your smartphone for, uh, for those readers. Now, so what you can do is you can actually take your phone, click on the co code, and it'll automatically bring up the video. Now, once you've done that on your phone, it's always there. All you got to do is go into the library of the app. All the videos you've ever scanned are there, so you don't have to always go back to the book and scan it. You, know, you just open your phone up and... Boom, there it is. So if you're out there in the field and say, hey, dang, I need to set my pump up, relief, bam, bring it up. You can watch it right there, like to telling you exactly what to do. So it's really a, that's something we've done the last couple of years, and uh, we're trying to make more and more of those videos as we can. Uh, just like this class here is being uh, filmed, um, not only for you guys, we're going to take this too and, and just take little excerpts of it, you know, and... Uh, so people can see what we do. So we're, we're going to take advantage of it as well. Um, if you open your manual up to the inside cover, you'll see there's a couple of business cards. Uh, one of them uh, belongs to our training coordinator, and one of them is mine. On the, the bottom of my card, you'll notice there's a cell phone number. That is my company cell uh, and, of course, email. Now, since you guys are customers of ours, in the future, if you're out there and you've got, maybe there's something you're doing, you have a question, you know, you're saying, well, you know, I remember Alan saying something about that, but I can't remember exactly what, what he said. Well, email. Give me a call. Uh, now, I do travel a lot and I'm teaching or out consulting. Uh, I'll get with you as soon as I can. I might not an answer the call right away. But if you need immediate help, call the other number. It's the office. There's usually one of us in the office, okay? So uh, if you have a problem with one of your hydraulic systems, uh, we don't mind giving you some advice or giving you some help if you need it, okay? 